Welcome to Reflections. This is our devotional Bible study where we're going to begin a new series. I, I call it, I Love to Tell the Story. And we're going to sing that great hymn, I Love to Tell the Story. We're going to be looking at some of the stories Jesus told. Uh, they're known as parables. If you have a Bible and would like to turn to Matthew chapter 13, we will um, begin there for our first one. But let's sing that great hymn. Many know, probably by memory, I love to tell the story. I love to tell the story of unseen things above. Jesus and his glory, Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story I know it's true Satisfies my longings Nothing else would do I love to tell the story Would be my theme in glory To tell that old, old story Of Jesus and His love I love to tell the story Some have never heard the message of salvation from God's own holy word. I love to tell the story, will be my theme in glory to tell that old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story. Ah, I love to tell the story. We want to pick it up from uh, Matthew chapter 13, uh, beginning with verse 1, and we'll uh, not read every verse, but I'll keep you posted if you have your Bible. Uh, Matthew 13, beginning with verse 1, that same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him, he got into a boat and sat on it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things and parables, saying, and then we flip down to verse um, 10. The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their ears, hear with the, or see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. For I tell you the truth, many prophets and righteous men long to see what you see, but did not see, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. We will continue in just a minute, but it reminds me, uh, there was a, a man who didn't like going to church, so he decided to go hunting. 
who's out in the woods when he was approached from behind by a bear. He dropped his gun by accident and ran for his life. He trips over a tree branch. The bear is about to strike him and he prays, oh dear Lord, please let this bear be a Christian. The bear held the man's hand. Dear Lord, thank you for the food I'm about to receive. You know, some stories put a smile on our face. They make us laugh, some make us cry, some drive home a point. Uh, this one is, certainly we can be grateful for all our blessings, or in this case, which is true, the safest place on Sunday morning is in worship with the people of God. And of course, sometimes you, you because of health, thank God for uh, uh, being able to watch it on TV. Well, this new series, I Love to Tell the Story, focuses on stories of Jesus, the master storyteller. And uh, Jesus gets in this boat to speak to great crowds on the shore, and he told him many things in parables. Now, Matthew 13 begins a turning point in Jesus' ministry. You see, early he taught in the synagogues. But Matthew Gospel records he left the synagogue and began to teach in the countryside. Why? Because the official leaders of the Jews were in open opposition to him. The first recorded parable of Jesus is the parable of the sower or the four soils. And I'll read the meaning of that in just a moment. You say, well, chaplain, what is the purpose of parables? I'm so glad you asked that question. Parable means to place beside. A, a simple way is just simply an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And Jesus' reason, he spoke in parables. He said to the disciples, to you has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom, but to them it has not been given because they do not see, hear, or understand. And so Jesus was fulfilling a prophecy from Isaiah chapter 6 where people's hearts had grown dull. And so um, obviously the ultimate blessing would that the grace of God would touch everyone and they would have forgiveness of sins, but many just weren't interested. And so for those who don't care or have already made up their minds, these stories would seem pretty foolish. For the curious and those eager to know more, the stories are full of potential meaning. And these stories are meant to draw the listener closer to Jesus rather than further away. So after letting the disciples know why he was teaching in parables, he explained the meaning. Now, again, parables are an earthly story with the heavenly meaning or twist. Jesus asked, how's our hearing? How's our hearing? And that's really the message behind the uh, first parable. It reminds me of a, a man frustrated by his wife's refusal to admit her hearing problem. And so he speaks to his doctor. Doc, how can I get my wife to admit she needs a hearing aid? The doctor said, when you get home, peek your head through the door and ask, honey, what's for dinner? If he doesn't answer, go into the living room then the kitchen, and finally walk right up behind her. This will convince her she needs a hearing aid. Well, so he goes home. Honey, what's for dinner? There was no answer at the front door. He's in the living room. Honey, what's for dinner? No answer. Now he's in the kitchen. Honey, what's for dinner? No answer. Finally, he walks up behind her and says, Honey, what's for dinner? She turns in a huff and loudly says, For the fourth time, we're having spaghetti. We don't always admit we have a hearing problem, do we? Um, so let me read the, the explanation of the parable of the four soils. <clears throat> so Jesus said in verse 18, listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The one who received the seed that fell on rocky places is the one who hears the word and it receives it at once with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. 
when trouble or persecution come because of the word, they quickly fall away. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the one who hears the word, but the worries of life, the deceitfulness of wealth, choke it, making it unfruitful. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the one who hears the word, understands it, produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. So the first thought is never underestimate the power of God's word. You see, the seed is the word of God. Isaiah says, my word that goes out of, forth out of my mouth, it will not return empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Now, interesting, they found a seed deep within a pyramid in Egypt, estimated at 3,000 years old. Well, they planted it to see if it would grow and reproduce. Guess what? It did. How much more God's word? And so we, we, God wants us to get a good <coughs> grip on his word. And I always like to use my, my hand. How can we get a, a good grip on God's word? Well, we hear, read, study, memorize, and meditate upon the word of God. Now, we only remember about 10% of what we hear, maybe 25% of what we read, 50% of what we study, but what we memorize and meditate upon, that's 100% retention, and that's how you get a good grip. You apply all five disciplines of God's word, and you see the firm grip we have on the word of God. And that's one reason I give an outline for the message every Sunday so people can continue to meditate and reflect on God's word. In fact, there was one man, uh, he was a coach back in uh, Concordia Village when I was uh, a chaplain at Springfield, in Springfield, Illinois. Uh, he'd come to every service, and all of a sudden, I didn't see him any longer. And then they told me, well, he went to another community. Well, all of a sudden, he's back. I said, oh, what happened? He said, you know, I came back because they don't have what I can get here, and that's you preaching the word of God. And he had a stack of outlines that he kept from every message. Uh, he, he even trained some professional football players. He coached football. Now, that's someone who wants to get a good grip on God's word. He was well into his 90s, still hungering for God's word. You know, uh, so we don't underestimate that word. And it reminds me also we're destined for fruitfulness. You see, what was sown on good soil is the one who hears and understands, and he bears fruit and yields 160 or 30 fold. Now think about this. Back then, if a farmer had a yield seven times what was sown, that would be considered a very good crop. But to have a yield of 160 or 30, unheard of, unusual. See, Jesus puts in this twist, again, in the culture, they would really understand, it would imprint on the minds of the hearers that they're destined for fruitfulness. There was a congregation washed as three nine-year-old boys were baptized and joined the church. Sadly, unable to continue with its dwindling membership, the church sold the building and disbanded. One of those boys was Tony Campolo. Now, today he's a pastor and author. While he was researching the church, he was baptized. He found his name, also Dick White, a missionary, and Bert Newman, who's a professor of an African seminary. He read the church report for his year. It says, it's not been a good year for our church. We lost 27 members, three joined, they were only children. Well, sometimes we forget children grow and the seeds that are planted never return void. So no doubt there was some fruit that was born even though they didn't see it at the time. Oh, what a, what a blessing. Well, Jesus really gets to the heart of the matter. He asks each of us today, what kind of soil am I? 
Reminds me of a pastor one Sunday morning showed four worms in separate jars. The worm that was in alcohol died. The one that was in cigarette smoke died. The one that was in chocolate syrup died. But the one that was in clean soil was alive and thriving. So the pastor asked, well, what do you learn from this demonstration? Well, an elderly lady raised her hand and said, Pastor, if you drink, smoke, and eat chocolate, you won't have worms. Well, she missed the point. We don't want to miss the point. So there's four responses to God's word. One is, oh, I hear, but I just don't get it. They hear the word of the kingdom, and they don't understand it. The evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in the heart. That was the seed that was sown along the path. You see, fields in Palestine were small, and were separated from one another by paths. So the ground was beaten flat by people and animals that used them. It's kind of like throwing grass seed on the sidewalk. Not going to get any results. Yeah, I hear, but I just don't get it because Satan the world, and our own sinful flesh keep us from understanding. There was a worker who asked for a pay raise and got this note from the supervisor. It read, because of the fluctuation predisposition of your position's productive capacity as just opposed to standard norms, it would be momentarily injudicious to advocate your requested increment. The puzzle worker went to the supervisor. If this is about my pay raise, I don't get it. The, super said, that, the supervisor said, that's right. You don't get it. You know, pride opposes any kind of dependence upon God. And so the Holy Spirit is unable to bring greater revelation understanding because Satan, the world, and the sinful flesh don't allow that seed of God to to make a difference in a person's life. Another response was, oh, I rejoice, but I can't follow through. This was what was sown on the rocky ground. They hear the word and notice immediately receive it with joy. But because there's no root, it endures for a while. But when tribulation or persecution come because of the word, immediately they fall away. You see, in Palestine, much of the land was solid rock and just a thin layer of soil on top. The crops would spring up quickly, but with no root system, they would wither and die. We can be like soil that allows the seed to sprout, but it's not deep enough to let the growth occur. You know, convenient Christianity likes the idea of the blessings of God, but not the difficulties. Notice, it doesn't say if trouble or persecution comes, but when it comes. Yeah, when it comes. Trouble and persecution are for the strengthening of our faith. Now, it takes time to let that sink in. You know, uh, if we, we look at it, say, uh, and this is just an example, say we have a kind of a kindergarten first grade understanding of God's word. Uh, most of us probably aren't going to like pain or trouble or persecution. But, you know, as we grow in Christ and maybe we become in high school or college or, you know, have a, a greater grasp of the truth of God's word, we understand that God doesn't waste trials. God uses them for our growth. And so the areas that we're wounded in, we can make a difference and be a, a blessing to others. Now, Growing up, I didn't understand why my dad with his PTSD and mental health issues and some of the challenges there, I didn't understand the blessing it could be to me when I was a teenager. But as I grown in Christ and, you know, uh, God was able to use the areas I was wounded in or challenges I faced growing up that way to, to make a difference and help others with mental health issues or families going through those kind of challenges. So, um, yeah, thank God uh, as he's uh, blessed us and helped us through in the areas of challenge and woundedness in our life, those can be used for his glory in the future. 
So I rejoice but can't follow through. I hear but don't get it. The third one is I, re uh, 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 I hear but I'm in charge. As for what was sown among the thorns, they hear the word. The cares of the world and deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it proves unfruitful. Certainly, weeds consume water and nutrients that should be used for the plants or they uh, wither and die. Certainly, worldly desires consume energy needed for uh, pursuing spiritual needs or we die spiritually. The surrendered don't have a tight grip on the things of this world. The unsurrendered say, I hear, but I'm in charge. You know, that great hymn says, Jesus, Savior, pilot me. You know, take the steering wheel of my life. Help me grip or hold all things loosely. Help me not hold so tightly on the things of this world. You know, it's easier. It's not always easy for allowing Jesus to be Lord of our life. And so certainly the things of this world can choke the word, uh, interesting, the word worry is uh, where uh, mental strangulation. Uh, it's like a, a pulling taffy. You churn at something over and over in your mind, and it's for a negative result. I always say if we worry, uh, we can meditate because meditation is just taking something positive. You know, um, all things work out for good to those who love him. Uh, Nothing's impossible with God. And so we can reflect on that which is positive uh, as well. So, but uh, those who struggle say, I hear, but I'm in charge. What areas of your life do you still want to be control of? Just release those to the Lord. But the final one is, I hear and I'm blessed. And Jesus said, blessed are your eyes for they see for your ears, they hear. Many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see and did not see it. So Jesus explained those who hear know that they're blessed. Now, note that all four soils were from the same field. So this doesn't represent four different types of people, but four different responses by the same individual. You know, God will do everything needed for the word to grow in our life so we may be blessed. That's why we have services and worship, and I do these reflections, and there's uh, your own personal devotions, all kinds of opportunities to allow the Word to work in our, our life. He feeds us, and um, the, the, the spiritual feast we experience here is just a foretaste of a greater feast to come. So he bought us with his own blood on the cross. Our God takes care of and tends his garden. He causes us to grow by grace uh, as we embrace the waters of our baptismal covenant. So thank God right now the, the word of God is going forth and our response is, oh God, let that word today work its way a little deeper in my heart. As Jesus said, he who has hears to hear, let him hear. So we're to be mindful of what will kill or squeeze out the word of God in our life. Don't give up in spite of the obstacles that are in our way. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. The good news is Jesus has defeated the devil, that old buzzard who'd want to swipe away the word. God removes the rocky ground through the preaching of the law to lead us to repentance. And don't get caught up in the worries of life because God is our Heavenly Father. Cast all your burden to him, for he cares for us. <clears throat> so uh, our God is filled with grace and mercy. Again, Jesus ends the story with the challenge, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. So what kind of hearer are you? Which soil are you most like today as this reflection goes forth. Three-year-old Beverly was playing with her toys while mom was folding laundry. 
Mom noticed Beverly's shirt was dirty and needed to be changed. Well, after calling two times with no response, Mom gave that full three-name call. Beverly, Elizabeth, Provost, did you hear me? Oh, yes, Mommy, I did. My ears did, but my legs didn't. Those who have ears to hear get their legs moving in their faith life. Come to me, all who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. See, the good news is we are destined for fruitfulness. So we continue to ask the Holy Spirit to open our heart to God's word daily. So we may know that we are indeed truly blessed. And so today, we've heard the word. We read the word. We're studying the word. Now we memorize and meditate upon that word. So reflect on that word a little deeper. Notice the good grip I have on that, on that word. Hear, read, study, memorize, and meditate upon that word truly reminds us that we are indeed blessed. That word of God is bearing fruit in our life. It's making a difference. We're being changed from glory to glory. We're becoming more like Jesus today than we were yesterday, all by his amazing grace. Well, let's sing one more time in honor of this new series. I love to tell the story, listening to these amazing stories of Jesus. I love to tell the story of unseen things above. Jesus and his glory, Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it's true. It satisfies my longing. Nothing else would do. I love to tell the story Will be my theme and glory To tell that old, old story Of Jesus and His love I love to tell the story Just pleasant to repeat Seems it's like I tell it More wonderfully sweet I love tell the story for some have never heard the message of salvation God's an holy word I love to tell the story will be my theme and glory to tell that old old story of Jesus and his love I love Tell the story for those who know it best. Seem hungering and thirsting to hear it like the rest. And when it seems of glory, I sing the new, new song. It will be the old, old story I have loved so long. I love to tell the story be my theme and glory to tell that old, old story of Jesus and his love. Well, may once again the story of God's grace and word fill us to, with joy overflowing uh, till we meet again. <laughs>